very first thing I saw through this Apertura 88, the planet Mars, using the 9mm eyepiece. I can see a little bit of surface detail. Did you know that you can actually see a galaxy or a nebula with your own eyes live through a telescope? All you need is clear skies and a tool such as this, and you can visually experience some of the most amazing things you'll ever see in your life. Or what about the planets and seeing Jupiter or Mars or Saturn as it's out there orbiting the Sun? It's an unforgettable experience that I think everyone should have. Seven years ago, I posted a video on YouTube of my camera up to the eyepiece of my first telescope, which was a Dobsonian just like this. I put the camera up to the eyepiece and zoomed in on the moon's craters, and the reactions I got in the comments were pretty much exactly how I felt when I saw it for the first time. It's jaw-dropping. You, you almost can't believe that it's real. Some people accused me of faking the video and that it wasn't real, and I continue to get some of those comments in the deep sky images I take through astrophotography now. The truth is, I wouldn't know how to fake anything so beautiful. If you want proof that these things actually exist, and you want to see things like the Orion Nebula in real time, do yourself a favor and get a Dobsonian telescope like this and look through the eyepiece. Here we go with the Apertura AD8 unboxing, Dobsonian. This video isn't about a telescope. It's about the feeling you get when you connect with the night sky on another level. It's about how everything changes once you see Saturn through the eyepiece, and nothing is ever the same. You suddenly start checking to see if the sky is cloudy or not every night, and you make all your plans around the new moon phase. Your first telescope is the beginning of a lifelong obsession with the night. Think of it as a door, and once it's open, you'll keep coming back for more. I'll never forget that first year with my Dobsonian telescope learning the night sky. My transition to astrophotography was next, but I wouldn't have appreciated it or enjoyed it as much as I do now without those early great experiences through the eyepiece. In this video, I have the pleasure of introducing to you what I think is the best possible beginner telescope for astronomy. One of the keys to opening up the treasures of the night sky is having a telescope with enough aperture and light gathering ability to really put on a good show. This Newtonian reflector can soak in more light faster than any of the astrophotography telescopes I've ever used on this channel. Because when it comes to observing deep sky objects visually, you need as much power as possible. I'm not talking about magnification. I mean a big mirror that can soak in as much light and deliver it to the eyepiece for you. 
If you've been a long-time subscriber to the Astro Backyard YouTube channel, you'll know that I always have recommended an 8-inch daub as a visual telescope for astronomy, especially for beginners. It's just the right mix of portability, ease of use, and power. Telescopes come in all shapes and sizes, but when it comes to enjoying the deep sky wonders from your own backyard through the eyepiece, it's hard to beat an 8-inch light bucket like the Apertura AD8. I remember opening my first telescope out of the box when I got it in uh, 2011, and it was a Dobsonian like this, just uh, a lot smaller. And I remember just how huge I thought that telescope was at the time. There's the uh, OTA right there, the 8-inch tube. Got something here. Got something here. And here's the tube. I'm going to use the foam to just set it down on the table. Okay, here we go. Here's the optical tube assembly. Let's go over the core details of the Apertura AD8. First of all, the type of telescope it is, it's a Newtonian reflector. That means that it's a mirror system. So there's a primary mirror at the base here, at the end of the tube, that reflects up to a secondary mirror and into the eyepiece. It's different than the refractors that I use for astrophotography that use a lens cell system. So the type is a Newtonian reflector and it's on a Dobsonian mount. That's this base here, and that's what makes it so special, and uh, a huge fan of visual astronomers, especially getting started. It offers that really comfortable viewing position and the kind of the point and shoot experience. So there's tension knobs on this, it's called a rocker box. There's a tension knob inside the base here, so I can tighten the stiffness of, of this kind of lazy Susan in the rocker box here, and I've got it pretty much the perfect tension where it will stay in position without nudging it, but I can easily move it side to side. And then there's also these tensioner knobs here for the altitude uh, adjustments. So up and down, and I've got it quite stiff right now, but that's fine because I wanna hold it nicely when I'm sitting there through the eyepiece. I don't want it shaking around. If I do loosen this up on both sides, you'll see that just the weight of the eyepiece will just start to let it fall. Uh, that's, not, that's no good, that's too loose. But uh, so you will be able to change that depending on the, the kind of equipment you have up here. Heavy eyepiece right now, so I've got it rather stiff. The details of the telescope, it's a focal length of 1200 millimeters. So a higher magnification than I'm used to than uh, in my compact refractors that are like 400, 500. So a little bit deeper. It's a great range for most targets. Like you're not gonna, with a wide field eyepiece, it's not like you're gonna be in too deep. The focal ratio is f5.9, rather fast. Some Newtonian reflectors can go much faster than that, f4, f3.9, but I think you'll find visually that f5.9 is uh, perfectly fine. It has a 8x50 finder scope at the near the objective there, and it's got the right angle finder, so you don't have to get behind it and uncomfortable. You can look straight in the top, and then it's correct image as well, so up, down, left, right. It's not inverted, which can be really disorienting if you've ever used a finder scope like that to align the finder scope, do it in the daytime. The way I've done it here is that I'm using that pine tree over there, the tip of it as a reference point, and then I found it in the eyepiece. You see it there? And then it's just a matter of turning these to uh, shift the positioning of the finder scope so it's also centered on that same pine tree tip. And now I know that they're both lined up together, so I can find objects through the little finder scope here, and I'll know that it will appear in my eyepiece, no matter how high the magnification. Uh, you probably noticed the eyepiece tray here that it comes with it. So they almost include everything you need in the box. You will need your own Phillips head screwdriver. Here's my little eyepiece tray. It's on there good. And that's probably one of the biggest things that sets this telescope apart from some of the comparable daubs in this range. It comes with two eyepieces, a nine millimeter plossal, inch, inch and a quarter. So that's for the planets, that's a high magnification piece. And then the one that's in there now, a two inch, 30 millimeter eyepiece. And that's kind of my favorite because that's what you want to use for nebulae and galaxies and star clusters to get that wide field of view. 
I believe it's 68 degrees field of view, so nice and nice and wide. It also comes with a moon filter, so that threads onto uh, a, one, a one and a quarter inch eyepiece, so you can, because the moon's gonna be super bright through a big light bucket like this, so you wanna dim it down actually for a better view. And then one of the best and most impressive features is that it comes with a laser collimator. And so the Newtonian design, part of the deal is that you have to collimate it on a regular basis depending on how much it gets knocked around. So basically all that means is that you adjust the primary mirror here with these hand, hand control knobs and it changes the tilt of the mirror and essentially you wanna have it perfectly centered so the secondary mirror and the primary mirror are perfectly aligned so you're getting that perfect image because they can be, they can get slightly off over time. So that's what you use this laser collimator for. You put it into the eyepiece and it sends up actually a red laser so it, it ends up moving around and you can center it in the dot in the, uh, in the primary mirror here. Very cool, very even cooler that it's included because any other scope you gotta buy one separately and uh, find out the hard way that you need to uh, additional stuff. This thing comes with everything. It's a bit beefy, but like I said, with the, the larger models, the 10 and the 12, yes, you get more light gathering power, but the eight inch is the ultimate uh, middle ground where you still get that power, but it's manageable. It's listed at about 50 pounds with this rocker box base and the tube itself, which sounds heavy, but I, I carried it no problem. It didn't feel 50 pounds, but you can of course, just take the tube out, it's just sitting in here, and do it separately. So set this down carefully, move that rocker box around, and uh, it's just a tube sitting in this box, basically. So it was easy to put together, uh, and I'm not just saying that because I, uh, I can have a hard time, uh, <laughs> I'm not very handy, let's just put it that way. And uh, I put this together in about 45 minutes. Uh, great instructions, a PDF online from, uh, from Apertura. So, yeah, so far so good. Now I just really want to look through this thing. It has been cloudy for almost, it feels like a month straight. We had a couple clear nights in there, but so rare. And uh, tonight was supposed to be clear, Saturday night. And uh, it started out very cloudy, but it's finally starting to clear up now. Still very cold, but uh, I can see Mars up there. Maybe you can too. Uh, and I can see... Cassiopeia and Perseus and still some clouds but it looks like I might actually get to use this Apertura 88 tonight so I am really excited about that. I realize that saying a telescope is the best telescope for beginners is a bold statement but I stand by this. Like I've been doing since day one from this channel I can only recommend what's actually worked for me in my own experiences. Almost 10 years ago, I had an experience with a Dobsonian telescope like this that got me absolutely hooked on astronomy and got me where I am today. So of course that's what I'm going to recommend for beginners because it works. The 8 inch model is a step up from the size all I could afford at the time was 4.5 inches. The 8 inch is really the best because you actually get that wow factor in the views because it has enough aperture to pull in some serious light. I understand if you can't afford it, there are smaller daubs available. Go for that. Why this particular AD8 stands out above the rest is because of the accessories included. Remember when I talked about that laser collimator and the two eyepieces, including a two inch one, uh, the eyepiece tray. I didn't even mention that it comes with uh, a battery pack for the fan to run on the back to uh, regulate the temperature. What was the other thing? The moon filter. This is all stuff you don't find in a, pack a telescope package for an 8 inch daub like this and the price is right. The last thing I want to do is recommend something and just say it's, it's the best beginner telescope this pivotal time for uh, any like a young astronomer or someone starting to get into it. The last thing I would do is point you towards something that's going to frustrate you. Last but not least I just want to talk about the difference between this telescope and a computerized one. It's all manual which means you have to earn the right to find the objects yourself. And guess what? It's one of the most satisfying feelings in the world. And the longer it takes you, the more exciting it is when you do find it. I remember for whatever reason, I couldn't find M13, the globular cluster, when I first got my job. And uh, it's one of the easier ones. And I just, I'll never forget when I was like, that's it. I found it. I see it. Get some star charts and some books. 
There's some great stuff online, and so you can star hop. It's called star hopping. You'll find you'll find a constellation, find the red star, hop to the next one, and you'll find deep sky objects. It's an incredible experience and unlike anything else. As for dealing with this type of telescope, because I normally talk about refractors and how simple they are, a Newtonian reflector needs collimation. So first off, when you get that telescope right out of the factory, if you get the Apertura, it's collimated out of the box. It's ready to go. I check mine. It's working perfectly. I'm, I could probably tweak it to be a little bit better, but it's not something that you have to worry about right away unless it's way off. That being said, again, online, there's so many resources for collimation. And with that laser collimator, you're going to get it so perfect. And it's kind of fun because you realize you're t making these subtle adjustments. And the better you get it, the crisper that view is going to be. Don't worry about collimation. It's not as scary as it sounds. I think that's it. I just want to get back out there. And uh, Orion is like just up around here and I'm going to look through the Orion Nebula through an 8 inch daub for the first time in this backyard. I've missed having a light bucket for visual so bad and uh, I'm getting emotional because uh, I just love this and yeah, I, I would never steer you guys wrong so you should get a telescope like this.